Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I bless God for this opportunity to bring His truth to you. Now, let's pray. Father, we bless you today. You are so good to us, and you have blessed us with your truth. Today, Lord, we open our hearts to fully receive everything that you have in store for us. And I declare burdens are being lifted right now, and yokes are being destroyed. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I see somebody being healed in your left ear. Your left ear. Something, something wrong with your left ear. I, I command healing right now in that ear in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That feud is stopped right now. And be healed in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now listen, when, when we share this truth, pay attention. You see, sometimes you, you, know, you, you listen to God's word on your phone, you listen to God's word in whatever medium on your iPads or whatever you use, and you just, you're just listening. So, oh, who's this person? Okay, oh, I like what this person is saying. Hey, there's an attitude to which you receive the word of God. You pay full attention to it. You don't listen to the word of God casually. See, when you pay full attention to it, then the anointing of God's spirit will come upon you and create a miracle in your life. I'm telling you the truth. See, because you don't know what God's going to say. He knows you're watching. See, he knows you're watching. He knows you're going to watch this broadcast. And then he has prepared for you. Now that's the activity of angels. Angels know that when this broadcast is being done, he knows it has to get to so and so person. And then he prepares them for it. So, so you listening to it, this right now is not by accident. God actually planned for you to watch. And because he wants to bless you today. Praise God. So, we were looking at Jesus saying, the true worshippers of God, they are here. And who are they? You and I. So what is the true worship? The true worship is the worship that is instructed or commanded by the Holy Spirit. So true worship is activated by obedience. The Holy Spirit speaks first. That's why I tell people, look, even if you want to give God an offering, it came from your mind. You want to give God an offering. Don't just wake up and say, I'm going to give God an offering. So I take it. No, you go before him and say, Lord, I want to give you this offering. You know, what, what, what do you think about it, Lord? I, I, I'm having in mind to, to give you this offering. I have it in mind to sow this seed into this person's life. See, now you, you, may, you may see someone in need, you know, there, there are lots of wisdom you need to have. You see someone in need, say, oh, ah, this person is in need. I want to help this person. You getting up to help that person is good, but it doesn't mean it's an offering unto the Lord. But you can convert it to an offering to the Lord. How? You bring it before the Lord and say, Lord, I saw this guy without shoes yesterday. And, and, and it's been on my mind. I want to buy him shoes. Lord, what do you think about it? I think it's good for him to have shoes. So I, I, I saw this shoe. I think it's going to be good for him. And let me tell you the truth. The word of the Lord will come to you. Now, when you act that way, it, though you're giving someone a gift that you saw in need, but the presence of God will consume that gift of yours. And God will open doors for you to be blessed. Now, when I say blessed, I'm not just talking about you receiving shoes because you gave shoe. That is not the blessing per se. That is the result of the blessing. Anybody can buy a pair of shoes. But it doesn't mean everybody is blessed. You need to understand this. And remember what he says in the book of Proverbs. And he says, the blessing of the Lord, it makes rich. The riches is not the blessing. But when the blessing is upon your life, you have access to riches. So the fact that you give someone a gift and you get something like that back doesn't necessarily mean you are blessed. But you see, 
When you are blessed, surely you will get what you have given back. But then the blessing is much more than that because the blessing comes with preservation. Why am I telling you this? So you will understand why it is so important that you hear and understand the voice of God. Now, begin to practice the attitude of listening for His voice. You want to give an offering? Some of you are going to go to church this evening. So what are you going to do? Some of you are going to go to church on Sunday or whatever. You, you are going to meet people. You are going to think of doing something good to someone. As wonderful as that is. Speak to the Lord concerning it first. What are you doing? You are practicing hearing from Him. You don't go to church and it's offering time and I, oh, 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 okay. Oh, I have, I have some money. I'm going to give it in, in, in the offering. And say, Father, as I give this offering, bless it. You knew you were going to church. So what do you do? You prepare an offering. You take time to pray over that offering. Say, Father, as I go for worship today, as I go to the assembly of your saints today, as I, as I go to church, as I go to this meeting, Lord, I come with you with an offering. And, and I want you to receive this offering from me, Lord. Now that's what makes the difference between the one who goes to church and comes back with something and the one who just went to church and after service, like, what did you get? Oh, oh, the pastor can preach, the pastor can preach. You know, that people like that. I, I just love the way the pastor preaches. Oh, that, that, that lady that sang the first song, I, I was so touched. What touched you? And, you know, the song touched me. How did the song touch you? Know, you know, sometimes we say these things, we don't even understand what we say. How did the song touch you? Oh, the message that pastor preached really touched me. How did it touch you? I was just feeling it in my spirit. How were you feeling it? So, so having felt it, what have you decided to do? No matter how much the anointing of God is upon your life, Nothing will change until you take a decision or you make a decision because of that anointing. The anointing of God can be present in your life right now. Maybe you're sick in your body and even now it's really happening. You're sick in your body and the anointing of God is, is right here. It's present. And you may be feeling that anointing and just be telling yourself, Wow, I like this experience. I'm enjoying this thing I'm, 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 I'm feeling right now. I'm just enjoying it. I'm just enjoying Oh God, you are so good. You are so good. And listen, that anointing is not going to be present like this. You know, the way you're feeling it. It's not going to be present forever. But when it comes like that, what do you do? If you were sick and you begin to feel the anointing, what do you do? Be smart. In this anointing, I'm going to get up and do what I couldn't do before. <laughs> Hallelujah. In this anointing, I'm going to get up and take a decision that I couldn't take normally. Yeah. In this anointing, I'm going to forgive because I feel so good, right? You know, there, there's, this, there's a season, you, you feel so good and, and someone goes, what about that person that hurt you? Ah, please, 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 ah, please, ah, is, is that a hurt? Is that something? Ah, let it go, please. Ah, just let it go. Yes, you take it. Now, five minutes before now, someone may have spoken to you about that. Hey, that guy that hurt you, what are you going to do? If I catch that guy, ah, if, I, if I finish dealing with him. And now you're enjoying the presence of God. You're just enjoying that anointing. And so, what about that guy that hurt you? You just smile and say, nah, nah, nah. I'm not going to let anything tamper with what I'm enjoying right now. Now, what do you do? Take a decision. Lord, you know what? I forgive that person. I let it go. Thank you, Jesus. Now, that is how the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. Because when you live in unforgiveness, a yoke is, is coming on you. You don't know it. But that's the truth. A yoke is coming on you. But when you are praising God and just worshiping God, and then that, that, that presence comes upon you. That anointing comes upon you. And sometimes you will hear the Lord whisper to you, hey, let go of that thing that's hurting you. Forgive that person that is owing you money. Yeah. Ah, oh, forgive. Yeah. But you see, the truth is, at that moment, you will just feel everything is possible. You will just feel, man, I'm walking on, 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 on clouds right now. Take 
quality decisions at that time. And when you do, stand by it. Because when that, when that glory or when that anointing is lifted, you will come back to your senses. And you will begin to, what did I just do? You know, so, some pastors take advantage of this. You know, they, are, they are ministry, and then they, they can sense the anointing is present. And, and there are people, you know, people under that, and then someone thinks, ah, this is the best time to raise money. This is the best time to raise money. And then he stands up and says, oh, look, the Lord wants us to give. So, look, I, I want someone who come and give a million. And, and in that anointing, man, things happen, praise God. And someone finished doing that. And then later you get on like, what happened to me? How did I do that? How did I make that pledge? How did I make that? And then the next they start calling you, hey, sir, you made that, you made so so pledge. He said, um, um, you're wondering, how, how on earth? But get what I'm telling you right now. You look at your own life. There are things that may not be right in your life. You know what you need? You need the voice of God in that situation. And so you, you, you get yourself in that atmosphere where God will speak to you. What are the atmosphere that God will speak to you? Number one, the Bible. You, you take time to begin to read the scriptures. See? You get yourself, now I'm not just talking about careless, I'm not just talking about plain audio scripture while you're walking and while you're doing, no, 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 I'm, I'm telling you something. Take some time out, maybe in the morning, take just, or late in the night, everyone is sleeping. Get up, carry your Bible and begin to read. Say, where will I read? Just, just, just trust, allow the Holy Spirit to guide you. And just, wherever you are reading. You might be reading Jeremiah, you might be reading Matthew, you might be reading Timothy, wherever you're reading. It really doesn't matter at this time. And you just carry your Bible and you're reading and reading and reading. What are you doing? You're, you're in an atmosphere. Now because, you see, and, and learn to voice out and say, Lord, I want you to speak to me. And you're just reading something. And, and, and suddenly, suddenly, it may not be a phrase in the Bible scripture where you're reading. No. Sometimes it may be a word will just jump out to you. And I, huh? Yeah. Other times, you just read something and, and suddenly, you just, you just begin to hear, you know, like, like hearing, or, or like someone is right behind you, over your head. I'm telling you, I'm telling you the truth. Now, it may not be exactly, but I'm just trying to tell you different ways that it works even for me. And then, you're reading the Bible now. And while you're reading, suddenly you begin to hear, you know, that, that your brother that is, this, this is like, this is what you should do. This is how you should handle it. Yeah. Yeah, see. I say, how do I know that's not my mind? I'll tell you. Your mind doesn't add knowledge to you. Your mind only speaks of what it knows. But when God is speaking to you, while you're listening, it's increasing your knowledge. It's increasing your wisdom. You know how a, a thought just goes through your mind? I'm like, oh, never thought about this before. Okay. Oh, yeah. How come I never thought about this? Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. You are not the one thinking. It is God speaking to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now that's why, and, and, and I say reading the Bible, second, prayer. Put yourself in the atmosphere of prayer. Go on your knees and begin to pray. If you can pray in tongues, good for you. Begin to pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit at least 15 minutes, 20 minutes, or if you can, if you can, one hour praying in tongues. And let me tell you this truth. When, when you pray in tongues at length like that, I, I, I'll advise you on this. 
You're praying and you're praying and you're praying. Now, there are times you are speaking in tongues and you just feel normal. You just, oh, shekele, bro, brende, de, 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 bro, do, do, shaka. But you see, the more you speak, that's why I always advise, speak some more. Speak some more. Now, the more you speak, uh, there are times you just know that you're beginning to speak some new tongues. You know what I mean by that? I mean, this is, this is, oh, I'll, you know, you, you are the one speaking. And your mind's like, man, I'm loving this. You know, like, huh. Now, when that begins to happen, you know what's going on? The anointing is, it's, it's, it's present now. So what do you do? Take advantage. After speaking like that, be quiet. Be quiet. In that attitude of prayer, just be quiet. And, and soon, thoughts will begin to drop in your heart. Now, that's the voice of God. Praise God. We're going to conclude on this tomorrow. Praise God. Have the best day ever. Bye-bye.